Welcome to another episode of From the Helm with Marine Max. I am your host, Lisa, and he is your host, Kelly, over here. How are you doing? In today's episode of the boating broadcast, we have Mr. AJ Hammer, TV personality and captain of motor yacht Olo and lifelong boater. Welcome to the show, AJ. Welcome. Hey guys, what's happening? Nice to see you. Good to be a part of it. <laughs> I love what you guys too. are doing here. I love watching this. I love that you two do this and you have a lot of fun and, and you really do a great job of educating people, both boaters and wannabe boaters. So uh, it's fun to be uh, here with you guys. Well, we are very, very happy to have you here. And uh, like you said, you know, this is all about education. And of course, boating is all about fun. So, so today we're going to be talking about fun on the water and your experiences past, present, and maybe a little bit of the future too. So sure. we're excited to chat. All right. To get things kicked off. So where are you broadcasting to us from today? Well, today I am broadcasting to you from, uh, I'm actually not on board, unfortunately. Uh, I am in New York, uh, at my home in New York, about roughly as the crow flies, maybe around seven miles from the mighty Hudson River, where we've done a lot of boating over the years. Yeah, we're not on the boat now. It, it's uh, an unfortunate part of the, the times that we're in. Uh, yep. We had actually decided to, to take the summer off after having been on board uh, pretty much nonstop for the last year and a half. Uh, we had wow. planned to lay, lay the boat up for the summer, and unfortunately, everything that has been going on uh, with coronavirus accelerated our schedule a little bit. But it is, uh, it's still good to be home, and I'm, I'm looking forward, even though we won't be on Olo this summer, we'll be using what I affectionately call OPD, other people's diesel, at, <laughs> pro at appropriate physical distance when the time yep. comes. Well, you certainly have, uh, you've, you've put a, a bunch of video content together uh, in regards to a lot of your uh, your mm -hmm. experiences on the water. So we'll definitely uh, show some of those to the viewers today as well. So um, could you kind of give us a background, a, a start? How did you get your start in boating? And, uh, you know, wh what is it that drives you to the water? That's, that's a pretty deep question. And it's also a pretty uh, simple one at the same time. And I think any boater can relate to that. Uh, part, part of it is, I have no idea. You know, maybe it's that I'm a water <laughs> sign. <laughs> no, really, I mean, it, it, from my earliest memories, for whatever reason, not because my family, you know, a lot of uh, boating people come from boating families. And that was not the case with me. When I was really young, I remember being obsessed with toy boats and I'd have them in the bathtub with me. And every time we'd go on vacation and there was a body of water nearby, I would somehow manage to talk my parents into getting a, a little boat, even if it was like a tin can with an outboard motor and nice. and take us out on the water. And I, I honestly don't know what it was. I, I think it's just a very uh, internal part of who I am and, and uh, just part of my nature that I, I love being on the water. I love what boating brings, which is just always seeing new mm -hmm. things and, and new adventures and and uh, being outside, which I'm, I've always been an outdoors person. So I would say that has a lot to do with it. And I, I think anybody you know who's, who's a boater can relate to that. I, I also remember, I used to go to summer camp as a kid in the Adirondacks when I was in, oh, I was probably you know, 10, 11 years old and everybody would go water skiing. And I was actually frightened to death of water skiing, but I was obsessed with the boat. So I would always want to be a part of it just so I could get out on the lake and, and watch how the boat worked and watch the, the guy who was driving the boat. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a boathead and I've always been a boathead and I probably always will be. Well, we also have a, a pretty cool image here to show too. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, you know, when was it, where was it? Tell us about it. <laughs> well, I may not reveal the when, <laughs> uh, because I actually I actually don't know the exact year, but I think the telltale there there are a few telltales here. Uh, one, that life jacket. Uh -huh. They don't make them like that anymore. Those were the life nope. jackets that boy, if you got those wet, it weighed more than I did. <laughs> I, I seem to have a nice uh, little digital watch uh, on my wrist, and, yeah. and that maybe give us a sense of time. And naturally blonde hair. You know, not quite no head hair, but but I was uh, yeah. Yeah, that that was one of those instances. Not, it's funny. I can't. I'd have to ask my parents. That could have been. We used to go to Martha's Vineyard a lot when I was a kid, or uh, out to Montauk and places like mm -hmm. that. I, I don't know, but that looks like a cool old boat that I would like to find somewhere somehow. Well, it, it's a great shot, and it's it's something that you know that that's what boating's all about. Is mm -hmm. you look like you're just having a blast out there. You're you're at the helm, which I'm sure uh, you know whoever was owning the boat was like, hey, you know, hop in there and, and, and captain it yeah. yourself. And uh, 
I mean, it's memories that you make like that. You just never forget. And of course, you know, getting some photos from those days is always a good thing too, right? Yeah. Actually, my mom scanned that and sent it to me one day. It was something that she had on one Aww. of those uh, flip, flip photo things that she keeps in her home. Yeah. And, and I used to see it from time to time when I visit. And one day she, I guess, just, you know, scanned her, took a still of it and sent it to me. And I, and I know I have a picture that we could put side by side with that. Not right now, but uh, <laughs> where from, from modern day, you know, on my 60 footer mm -hmm. with that same smile on my face. Now, if you hold on just for a moment, I actually, I need to take a sip, but while, while I'm at it, I'll get some product placement in there. You see, oh, I don't mess look around. look at that. Here. Hey, okay. look at that. Huh? Huh? That is sweet. You know, you do business custom. with Marine Max, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> that is that is a limited edition, folks. Uh, not many of those. So uh, you're very, uh, that, is, that is great that you have that. Very cool. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. So obviously you have been boating your entire life. We can get into that a little bit, but how would people recognize, I know a lot of people recognize the name AJ Hammer. Where did you get your career and how might people know you other than the boating industry? Uh, well, I would say primarily if people recognize my name, it's, I've, I've had a, a pretty long uh, career in television and in radio that started when I was 15 years old, uh, which is really all I ever wanted to do from the time I was a kid. I had a radio station that I built in my bedroom when I was little, and I was obsessed with WNBC in New York, where I grew up. And uh, at some point, I became friends with the disc jockey who was on at night, and he used to invite me up to the station, which was the greatest thrill of my life. And when I was around 15 years old, he hooked me up with a completely illegal, could never happen in today's human resources world internship, where I would go into the station on Sundays and fetch coffee and pull tapes. And when I was really lucky, I got to answer the request line. And this, for people who have seen the excellent uh, Howard Stern movie, Private Parts, this was around that same time. So, so those people in that movie were people I worked with, the people who were represented uh, in that, wow. in that show. So, uh, yeah, that's where it sort of all started. And from there going off to college and my radio career just kind of took off. And I, I ended up working, uh, on the radio, sort of a, a lifelong dream. Uh, when I was in my early twenties, I was doing the night show at WPLJ in New York city, which is a heritage top 40 station. And I also worked at Z100 in New York. And these are stations that I grew up listening to. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, I, I've never taken it for granted that I got to sort of follow my bliss and, and, and do what I loved. And one thing just sort of led to another uh, when I was considering making a move from radio, VH1 came calling. That's some people mm -hmm. may remember. I was yep. the top 10 downtown. Yep. I was on virtually, if you were on your treadmill in the mid 90s, <laughs> you, you were seeing me off on a screen at some point. VH1 yeah. was actually, I, I've always remarked, it's some of the most fun I ever had. That was at an earlier, much earlier time in the network's. Um, existence where it was all about music and it was all mm -hmm. about introducing people to, to great new artists. And that was fun. And that was sort of my training ground in television, which led to jobs on uh, some morning TV shows, on the television show Extra. Um, I was on a show called Good Day New York uh, in New York City for a couple of years. And then after that, uh, a few things between then and when I came to CNN, which is where I was uh, most recently for uh, inside the last 15 years for a good part of that, hosting a show on HLN called Showbiz Tonight. And I was also acting as the entertainment news anchor wow. on CNN and appearing across the board on all their shows. Great fun. I mean, it really, it was a great place to work. It was a great place to be associated with. Uh, had the time of our life putting that show on the air, bring it to an end. And mm -hmm. then it was t time to take some time off and go boating, which is yes. why I'm here with you fine people right now. <laughs> well, that's a, quite the career. I mean, a lot of different, a lot of different things that we can, we can search into and dive into, but obviously we're here for boating. Uh, it's just kind of doing a little bit of research and preparing for this. I did notice that Marine Max actually did a feature or you wrote an article in one of our Marine Max magazines. It was right. a summer 2017 lifestyles yep. magazine and we have it. It's a, uh, an excellent story about chartering a, a catamaran in the British Virgin Islands. And you begin by saying, you know, we, we either have to stop bragging about this or take our friends uh, because we've got to go, you know, twice in a lifetime. Uh, yeah. Do you remember this, this trip? And uh, can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> <laughs> why, do you remember why this are you trip? asking if I remember that? Because I mean, I know you remember this trip. You go to the BBI? <laughs> hey, is that why? 
a couple Usher's painkillers, you know. Uh, you know That's why you got to write it down. I remember that trip, and I remember the trip prior to that. It was that was actually the second time mm -hmm. we went, and uh, my husband Tim largely wrote that article. But we went uh, first. We went, gosh, that was back in 2014. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure was was the first trip that we took, and it was just four of us, um, and we were on a Marine Max. 484, which is the Aquila, and obviously yep. I mean, you guys have spoken with the folks from Aquila, and we love that boat, by the way. There, you want I can do a whole sales pitch on the, the 484 catamaran. <laughs> it was just awesome, um, and it was such a great experience. And so when the opportunity presented itself to go back to the BVI a couple of years later, so I, I think that was around 2017, that last trip. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, who, who are we to say no? Uh, I, I strongly encourage when oh, yeah. things. Are, are back to normal. And, I, and I'm sure actually that's a great way. And this is a good point just to make generally, you know, speaking now in, in current time about what's going on, just getting out on your boat is, as everybody's been saying, really the perfect way to do social distancing and have fun and be with your family and those people who maybe you are uh, isolating with, well, get on a boat and go out with them. And, you know, the BVI uh, experience and particularly through Marine Max Vacations, and I ain't just saying that because I'm I'm here doing the show with Marine Max. I, I recommend it to everybody. And if you have the opportunity, it is an exceptional thing to do. Well, real, especially if you are coming from smaller boats. Uh, the first time mm -hmm. we went, we we had a, a 47 foot. So the leap wasn't it wasn't really a leap for us. We were used to the bigger boats, but never having had the catamaran experience, it really got us into power cap. So I can't yeah. say enough good things about that whole that whole experience. Have, have you guys been? Oh, we've been. Yeah. Uh, Lisa recently, uh, well, I guess it wasn't too too long off. Uh, you were just down there not too long ago. Yeah, I was down there in January for a press trip. So both times I've been twice. I went uh, with a group of customers out of the Marine Max Clearwater store uh, also in January. And it's a little bit breezier in January. Do you remember what time of year you guys went? Yeah. Well, so the first time we went was in March, which is it's a pretty standard mm -hmm. time to go and probably one of the busiest times. Everybody's on spring break. Uh, and it was great. It's it's always there are always the trade winds down there. It's always going to be breezy. But the second time, just because of everybody's schedules, we went at the beginning of August, the end of July and beginning of Ooh. August, which would so no, right? So that would be a reaction. <laughs> you you wouldn't think to go. The truth is the breeze is always blowing. It 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 did not make travel difficult. But it kept things cool enough, and the crowds were so low at that time. We never worried about pulling into any of the mooring fields and getting a mooring. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't have to, you know, wait behind three dozen people to jump off the top of of the Willie T, which I believe there is a video <laughs> of you on the internet, Lisa, doing. I I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> we're doing a shot off a surfboard. I'm not sure which it was. But uh, but it really was a unique time to go. And also it was right before, I guess it's at the end of August when most of the, the tourist spots down there take their break and they have yes. their mm -hmm. holiday. And yep. so you would think, you know, maybe this is the American way of thinking, oh, everybody's getting close to their holiday and their vacation. They're going to start slacking off and not giving you a good time and all that. It, it may have even been quite the opposite. I've always found everybody down there to be friendly, helpful, engaging. Mm -hmm. But this, at this time, I think they were all excited. They were so happy that we came with good cheer. And that's the whole thing. It's all about the energy down there. Um, it is. And, and, and uh, that actually just is reminding me that it, it sort of ties into Olo in a way that we can come back and revisit uh, later. But that has a lot to do with where the Olo name came from. I'll just point that oh. out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We could, if you remember, that's a deep tease. If you remember to ask me about that later, I'll, I'll explain. I have a guess, and I'm gonna I'm gonna guess later when we get into this, uh, because I've okay. like I said, right. I've been doing a little bit of research, so I, I have <laughs> okay. I've got I've got my guess. So let's talk more about um, about Olo, and uh, in my research, I found that you have a furry first mate that I would love to talk. I I mean, yes. tell it's us a dog. how you. <laughs> to be clear. Oh, I love that picture. Aww. Can I, buy, I can I buy an too. Oakley? I love the caption yeah. also. I, I was like looking around for a good photo and there's so many, how do you yep. choose? And yeah, I would say um, there are more photos of Jasper in our collection than, you know, more than anything else that we've ever taken. But, uh, oh, and there's a nice uh, post from Sea Dreams South. Some lovely people who we met just through social media. Social media and boating has really become 
a whole other thing with with cruisers following each other on Instagram and each other's adventures. And I happen to really like those ladies a lot. But uh, yeah, Jasper, yep. since you asked, yes. we always we always say so. So Jasper is a five year old uh, rescue mix who uh, we always say is the boss, and we're just his crew. Um, <gasps> We have, we have tried to get him, actually, when he was a puppy, Tim tried to teach him from when we first got him how to fetch a line, and he could fetch the line. He just wouldn't drop the line. He wouldn't <laughs> lead off the line or anything like that. So we tried, but 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 he he loves the life. He I mean, I, We always say he loves being with us, but the, but you just see, and, and anybody who goes to our Instagram or, or looks through any of our videos mm -hmm. will see the, the pure bliss. Uh, his, his smile is not dissimilar to mine when I'm on the water and he's just a happy boy out there. He is our calling card. Everybody, you know, people who have dogs know what it's like. You're walking down the street. Everybody wants to meet oh, the yeah. dog. You know, they might not. not yeah. even say, that's, that's fine with us. We're okay with that. <laughs> uh, so so he, he, he really, he really is, is an awesome boat dog. Uh, loves to travel. When we have our long travel days, we don't do too many, but if we have a 10 or a 12 hour day, he, he is not potty trained on board yet. I say that he's five years old. We, we still threaten to do that just so we're not as restricted. And I, I do know from friends of ours, it is possible for a dog at any age. Um, huh. But he knows he, for, there's something that happens if we get up and it's before first light and he, he's going for that walk and he hears the generator starting, he somehow in his system knows, oh, I better get my business done quickly and get back to the boat. And then I'm not going to eat or drink until I sense that we're getting close to our destination. So he, he's kind of yeah. got it, got it figured out. Well, he totally has that uh, that salty dog look too. He's got the beard, you know. He's basically he's ready. He's ready for a life on the water. Yeah, yeah. There's no question. He loves it. He always wears his life jacket whenever we're coming into port mm -hmm. or leaving. He, he always has his life jacket. But that shot is actually taken up on our bridge deck, where he's very yep. secure. And and at at most, he'll lean over the side to do some dolphin spotting. And I just noticed that the uh, you even have some custom pillows there to make the name of your uh, your boat. Uh, which is yes, there's, also there's a actually nice an O behind him. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank, thank you, thank you for that. That that's one of our little yachty features. Uh, I don't remember which boat show it was, and I saw the, uh, on the chairs in the back, on the on the lounge chairs in the back of uh, it was a super yacht. It had mm -hmm. the name spelled out either, each on an individual pillow. So I turned mm -hmm. to Tim and I said, "Well, we should have that." <laughs> and so now, if you ever come by Olo and we're we're set up at a marina for a few days, you'll see him up on our bridge chairs or up on the foredeck. We have a bench up there. Um, because we're those people. We're those people. <laughs> awesome. and the Why not? And, it, and, it, and it's funny, wearing the shirts, the number of times, more often than not, I, I find when we pull in somewhere, people assume that we're the crew. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's true. No, and, it, and, it, and it's great. I love it. Yeah. Um, I will tell you, I'll tell you a very quick story about this because it's one of our earliest memories on Olo. We had just taken delivery of the boat. It was at a marina in Connecticut. And after we closed for about a week, we kept the boat tied up at their service docks because we we're starting to get some work done, doing our electronics and, and a few other things that we wanted to do before we left for our, our maiden voyage. And there was a very beautiful down east style boat, a very proper, you know, maybe a 47 foot, 50 foot, uh, mm -hmm. but probably a $3 million boat in, in front of us. And uh, a lovely woman had been milling about the boat. She was a bit older. And later in the day, I was up on the foredeck and I'm covering up our uh, bridge, uh, our, our foredeck uh, bench uh, with the cover. And she waves at me and she said, oh, I see you're, you're closing up. Aren't the people coming? I knew exactly what she meant. <laughs> uh -huh, that, yeah. but, but, I, but I pressed her and I, and I said, uh, I said, the people who, who are you? Who do you mean? And she said, oh, the owners. I assume the owners were coming. And I just smiled and I raised my hand in the air and I <laughs> pointed at Tim and I pointed at Jasper and said, nice Aww. to meet you. And she's like, oh, oh very nice. Enjoy. And she kind of walked away. We're the crew and we're okay. What, one thing about boat owners is you never know who you're dealing with either. But, you know, you could, you could have a, a mega yacht owner sitting right next to you in tattered jeans and just a t-shirt or something like that. You never know. I mean, it's a... It's just a crazy world that that boat life. Yeah, and that, and that's really one of the things that we love about it so much. It is, mm -hmm. in some ways, you know, maybe the great equalizer is is not the best term, 
But I mean, we used to always say that about the subway in New York City because you could be standing next That's to anybody. Um, mm -hmm. but, when, but when you're on the water, uh, you, you were meeting constantly, meeting people with whom you'd otherwise never cross paths, right? From yep. different walks of life, from different geographical locations. And then at the same time, you realize, as we always do in life, you know, what a small world it is or can be. And it, it, is, it is one of the remarkable uh, times. And, and we've had, you know, we've had that situation where we've been just sitting, enjoying a drink next to the owners of a super yacht uh, mm -hmm. sitting on one side of us and, and maybe, you know, a 21 foot day boat on the other side of us. Yeah. Well, and it's, and we, uh, love, we one, love it all. One thing I always come back to uh, is, hey, you, you know, you're cruising past somebody on the waterways and you just nice little like, everyone waves. Everybody yeah. waves. No matter who you are, you just love being out on the water and it, it's what it's all about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I do want to show uh, real quick before we get past Jasper, uh, which uh, yes. is, is, of course, the star of the show. We do have a cool yeah, video. We could do that. a whole show on Jasper. <laughs> so this is a, a cool video showing Jasper enjoying a day on the water and uh, checking out some of the uh, aquatic life that's out there. Yeah, so I'm trying to think where this must have been in Florida somewhere, but we're obviously not in a place where we were capturing crystal blue water. Mm -hmm. uh, but but he, you know, we we travel at a speed. We we often travel at ten knots. That's sort of our preferred cruising speed. We can go mm -hmm. faster, but we we really enjoy seeing. We're not in a rush. We enjoy seeing life on the water at that speed, and and also you know dodging crab pots at that speed is a lot easier <laughs> than twenty six <laughs> knots, which we used to do in our old boat. Um, but the dolphins really love what we're running out there, which is about 1,200 RPMs oh. and getting in our wake. And if I can maintain that speed for a half an hour, they'll be there for a half hour. Now, Jeff yep. is being quiet at this moment, but he is often barking and yelling and screaming. <laughs> and we never know, is it because he wants to get in the water and play with them? He wants to rescue them? We're not sure, but it is, it is his bliss, and our bliss is watching him doing that. Well, that's one thing uh, also about the water is, is you never get sick of stuff like that. I mean, just seeing dolphins nope. to manatees to even pelicans is is nuisance, you know, prone as they are. Uh, I mean, there's just so much wildlife just to be out on the water. And yeah. Any, anything you've ever seen that you can think of out on the water in terms of just wildlife or cool, cool scenery uh, that you can kind of that pops into your mind? Sure. Well, well, before that, just a quick mention, because you, as you said, one of the great things about being on the water is seeing this. And I don't think there's a boater I've ever met, and any boater watching this can relate, when you see those dolphins or when you see a manatee. But, but there is something magical about the dolphin. And, and maybe it's different if you live around them all the time, but I've never met anybody who has ever tired of that. You know, it, it, yeah. it's, you always hear, and, and people are always posting their videos with the dolphins in their wake and it's this it is a magical moment and we have heard and often say it is good luck when they appear a pot of dolphins will appear at the beginning of your journey just as you're starting out for the day which does happen a lot we see mm -hmm. dolphins with babies all the time and that's always amazing and, and if you go on our youtube channel we have another video a bit more recent we were down on the gulf coast earlier this year and we had dolphins it was it was like sea world I and mean, they were jumping high in the air and doing tricks and tim is very good at capturing all that i'm busy driving the boat most often when this is happening and jasper's yelling and i'm just trying to you know maintain course and and pay attention it's it's and it's very easy to want to get distracted and go watch what he's watching but i i'm way too diligent about never letting my eyes leave um but you asked kelly about any specific wildlife mm -hmm. Not, nothing particularly unusual we, we've always wanted uh, when you travel the ICW and you're, it, we do the migration, we've done it a few times uh -huh. uh, between New York and Florida, and you're going through North Carolina and the Alligator River, Pungo River Canal, which is a very long, narrow man-made ditch um, that we're told you would, shouldn't be surprised if you see a bear swimming across in the middle of it. Never saw the bear. Keep our eyes peeled for the bear. Haven't seen the bear. Uh, eagles, though, we still get a kick out of seeing bald eagles. And... Uh, we travel with uh, every now and then a friend of ours, Captain Sean Flynn, who mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, for a time the captain of the When and If, which is the sailing yacht that was commissioned by General Patton and was docked behind us for the last few years in uh, Stock wow. Island Marina in Key West. Anyway, I digress. Captain Sean is eagle eyed and he has traveled a lot of the ICW with us and he can spot an eagle without binoculars from miles away, it seems. 
and he perfected the art. We have stabilized binoculars. He's perfected the art of taking photos through the binoculars uh, of these bald eagles. And I believe on our trip north, he was with us for, I don't know, maybe eight days or so. I believe he spotted something like 34, 36 bald eagles. I could have the number wrong, but it was it was oh my a wild number. And that, that never gets old either. No, no, it certainly doesn't. And, uh, Stock Island, uh, uh, we, we were uh, recently, uh, <laughs> there was a, a Marine Max uh, Galleon Rendezvous uh, down in Key West, and Stock Island was one of the Did you say Galleon oh. Rendezvous? Uh, there oh you God. go. <laughs> where, do you where do you think I pilfered this cup? Some guy had too much to drink and left it behind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. And uh, in Stock Island, uh, as you mentioned, it was one of the beautiful locations, Stock Island. It's a place, you know, everybody just goes straight down to the end of Key West, but uh, you mm -hmm. have to check out Stock Island for sure. Yeah. Stock Island Marina Village is uh, really one of our favorite marinas. And the one thing about it that we always tell people is it is a destination unto itself. Everybody thinks of Key West, well, if you're going to Key West, you got to stay in the Key West Bight. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I agree. We actually, the first time uh, when we bought our, our boat prior to Olo, we brought it around, we purchased it in Sarasota, and we were moving it around Florida to get it up to New York. And we had to go to Key West for the first time by water. I've been going to Key West for a long, long time. And it was the first time getting there by water. We stayed at the Galleon, which is where the Galleon Rendezvous, yep. uh, where the boats were docked, I, I know. Because, I mean, really, it's Galleon, Galleon. It's not spelled the same, but I get it. I understand. Uh, next time, it's Stock Island Marine, though. But uh, it, it's a great place to stay. But the, the beauty for us, because we like to stay f in Key West for, we stayed last year for, uh, I think it was four, five months, about. Uh, so Key West is right there in your backyard. But the marina, Stock Island Marina Village, is a mm -hmm. destination resort unto itself with a really amazing unpretentious but groovy organic raw feeling uh and it's just a world-class marina in operation I, I can't say enough good things about it it certainly is yeah so you have to t check it out if you're ever thinking hey I, i'm uh you know i'm heading down to key west uh, uh give stock island a, a thought too while you're you're planning out and, your adventure. and i'll just i'll just point out kelly we do have friends who do stay in the key west bite but before they start their way back up the coast they always move the boat around because the Stock Island Marina is on the Atlantic side. So they come around mm -hmm. at the southernmost point and bring their boat up to Stock Island Marina and stay there for a couple of days, enjoy the amenities and the pool. Because when you stay in town, it's great, but there are people around all the time. You don't have a pool there. You don't have really mm -hmm. great, easy places to quickly walk your dog. Right. So, so there are a lot of real benefits of Stock Island, which has amazing restaurants, and two pools, and the Perry Hotel right on site, which- Perry Hotel is is a spectacular as you know you you've seen it. it it's just a remarkable place and as i said you could have the nicest place in the world but the, if the vibe sucked well then that's no good and the, right. the vibe there's just so totally our speed and 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 really cool uh which is why we love it and a great boating community there as well for sure getting away from the hustle and bustle of key west mm -hmm. that yeah. sounds uh that's a rough <laughs> when Key West is too much, you, you go right. off for a, exactly. For a That's your happy problem. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, I have not been to Stock Island, but I think they might need to put that on my my two visit list or get down there with Kelly for the next Galleon Rendezvous. Um, so I know we've been pulling up a lot of photos and videos. If you're interested in uh, seeing more, you can find my Olo obviously on the website myolo.com, um, myolo.com. On Facebook, myolo1, and then on Instagram at my underscore olo. Uh, basically, just just Google myolo. Yeah. <laughs> and what does yeah. my and all there, stand for? It's all there it, on our on our on our uh, website. My is motor yacht. Right. Uh, in just case people olo don't know, is, olo is a, uh, a Jefferson Marquesa motor yacht, sixty foot, uh, one of the later models uh, they built uh, while they were still in business. You know, it's a, it was a uh, Kentucky company. Um, American designed, a uh, guy named David Shaw, and uh, Taiwanese built really uh, a, a yacht that impressed us. And we can't believe to this day we have the privilege of, of being her custodian because we absolutely love it and, and have really been, in, been enjoying the process of ownership for now uh, just over two and a half years. Okay. So I, is, what are we pulling up, Kelly? So I got There's some Ola. images. 
Uh, and I, is that I think we'd start there. Yeah. So this okay. is her. Yeah, we can work our say, way backwards. There we yeah. go. I was going to say, you didn't start with a 60 footer. If, and if you did, I mean, that, that's one way to jump into the boating, boating <laughs> yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. <laughs> and and nor do I think your insurance company would be okay with it. So uh, we could uh, we could start uh, we could start from smallest to largest here too. Could you tell us a little bit about yeah uh, this where it all group. started? Oh yeah, yeah. look at it's look at that huh? boy. We that is a Sea Ray 2002 Sea Ray 210 Sun Deck. We were living large, man. I couldn't believe when we pulled that boat when we trailered that boat from the place where we purchased it. Uh, to upstate New York, and it's behind us. Uh, I couldn't believe that we had this thing. It was just the, the greatest thing. The very quick story of this boat was uh, for a birthday of mine. This was back in 2005. Uh, we had been planning to do a, a yacht charter. Uh, Tim had wanted to go mm -hmm. with a bunch of friends, and we were all going to charter a yacht, you know, in some exotic location. And the more he started thinking about it, he said, well, you know, for what we will pay for that week, we could just own a boat. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess so. And we had really loved, uh, our family has a, a, an older formula runabout, but we wanted something that we could keep uh, on the Hudson River upstate. Mm -hmm. And we were big fans of, of the Sun Deck. And so Tim conspired with my dad and surprised me on my birthday with a boat. Now I know that sounds ridiculous and it, and it is, and, and I don't take that for granted, but it was the single greatest uh, birthday surprise uh, at that time in my life I could possibly have imagined. And that's really what started it all. And, and that was mm -hmm. in 2005, literally, it was October. You see, you see the leaves on the tree. Yeah. I believe that, that yep. shot was taken that year. Uh, so we had to use, we got to use it for a month. We'd be out on the Hudson River in our, you know, warm clothes with our uh -huh. friends and, uh, and, and enjoying the, the Hudson in the fall, which obviously is spectacular. And then we had to put the boat away right away. So of course that was the longest winter ever, <laughs> but, but that's when I really started digging into Sea Ray and really getting to understand mm -hmm. the brand. And then of course came spring. We were the first ones in the water and oh, yeah. we decided, we thought we were going to be trailer boat people, but we decided that uh not for us we we would much prefer to be able to keep it at a slip and we were lucky enough to get a spot at a, lo a local marina and that was really the great summer that started everything we were on that boat every moment of every weekend taking it out going places day boating uh any dock and dine we could find in the yes. area and it, it was really the beginning of this great love affair, as cliche as that sounds, it, it really is the truth. And, and we couldn't have had more fun. And boy, was that a, a fun and great boat. I, I'd own that boat again, for sure. We'd have to tow it, but I'd own it again. I, <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous. But what that really did was introduce us to a, a couple of aspects of boating that we didn't know existed. And I, and I think, listen, most boaters who have graduated up to larger sizes and, and to real cruisers can relate to this story in one way or another, you know two foot itis, 10 foot itis, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So, so that summer after really getting to know the boat over those first few months of the summer, we said, well, let's take the boat. It's only, you know, a hundred miles down to New York city. Let's take the boat down the Hudson and, and go to New York city and tie up at a Marina in New York city. Now, I think a lot of boaters will also say, uh, if I knew then what I know now, oh, I yeah. wouldn't do half, half the stuff. I mean, I, I <laughs> was, was our friend in a way, but it, it just, everything we learned back then has made us better boaters and, and right. you know, safe, safety is a priority. I don't think I would do that trip today in that boat. You certainly could, but there were things we didn't know about the weather and about wind against tide, which in a 21 yep. foot deck under the George Washington bridge and the 21 foot sun deck can get quite snarly and you, you just don't think of yep. these things. But we made this trip and it was our first destination boating trip. And that is what really made us see that there was this world where, oh, you can go to this marina and you can stay at this marina. Now, of course, we didn't have a cabin on the sun right. deck. And so we, we pull up to Liberty Landing Marina, which is really the, the best place, in our opinion, to stay if you want to stay in the New York City area, directly across from lower Manhattan on the Jersey City side with the greatest view of Manhattan. It's protected. Fantastic marina. I can't say enough good things about it. And we're pulling up and I have my little 
uh, VHF and I made, made a reservation and I hailed them on the VHF. And it was the first time that a Marina responded to me and said, uh, yeah, Captain, we copy, bring her on in. And I started looking around like he said, Captain, who's he talking to? <laughs> and, 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 and I bet every, I bet every boater can remember that first time when you realize, oh, right, that's me. And, yeah. uh, I'll try to make this very quick, but we get the boat in, we get it into our slip, and all of a sudden it starts to pour rain. Oh, and we have our nice. we have our bimini top up, but we had our friends on, we had the cooler open, we're having our arrival whatever, and we're like, okay, we're getting wet. So uh ever crafty Tim takes out our mooring cover, drapes it over the bimini, so it gives us side curtains. So here we are at Liberty Landing Arena. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we're this little boat with, with the draped curtains, but we're having the time of our life. While this is happening, we see somebody wheeling a dolly that has a case of wine onto it up to the yacht that was at the tea head behind us. Now, yep. thinking, thinking back, knowing what I know now, it might have been, you know, a 45, 50 footer. I don't know, but they were, they got on, <laughs> they were huge. dry, they had their wine. And, and so that it maybe is where a couple of, of uh, bells started to ring in our head. Um, but that really turned us on to destination boating. So mm -hmm. at the end of that season, uh, we decided that maybe we should explore the idea of a boat that we could actually stay aboard. One other mm -hmm. quick mention, mention on that. When we got back to our marina and we were uh, back at the docks and it was after a long day, we were never the people who could understand, oh, you go to the marina to hang out on your boat, but you don't leave the dock which we saw a lot and we didn't quite understand the lifestyle very much. And then it was maybe a Sunday afternoon. We got back early in the afternoon and we weren't ready to, to, to go home. And so we, we sat on the bow of the boat up in the, the front deck and we had a drink and we were like, Oh, you know what? This is actually pretty nice. We had a mm -hmm. nice morning of boating. Now we're having a nice time hanging out with the Marina life and the boats going by. And that's when we realized, Boy, it'd be nice to stay on board. Boy, it would be nice to have a head on board that we'd be willing to use. Mm -hmm. Boy, it'd be nice to have a refrigerator on board. And that's what led us to uh, our next boat, number two. Um, and I, I bet Which you have a I, that. There we I go. I believe, is this she? This there is her, is. huh? Can you name, two, name that boat? 260, 260 Sundancer? 260 Sundancer. That is a 2006 260 Sundancer. We bought as a wow. leftover. Uh, with the, the <laughs> pewter, the, the pewter, oh, we got a great deal on it. Um, and it was, yeah, it was a stock leftover that was getting cleared out. Love the pewter hull. We, yes. this boat, now if we thought our last boat was this enormous thing, this was a yacht, man. We had our refrigerator. We had uh, all the, the, the bells and whistles we could have imagined, you know, the little uh, swim platform shower, all these things that we just could never, have imagined we would have and, and part of the thing was well we always loved going fast and so the idea mm -hmm. of, of moving into a boat that we're suddenly going to go slower we we something really sporty and we found this boat to be a really good compromise and right. a real good place to learn about the ins and outs having a boat that plugs into shore power that that has air conditioning we didn't have a generator in that 260 um but it was a really nice balance of, of speed and comfort and it allowed us to go to more places. The big trip that summer is we went up to Lake Champlain and that ah. was a big adventure. That was a full, probably, you know, nine nights aboard, except what we learned in that trip was every <laughs> night uh, we'd go down, we would, you know, make up that little V berth that was also a, a dining table. We'd have to take all of our stuff that was sitting around in the cabin yep. and, and, and bring it outside because we didn't have enough room because of course our dog seven at the time, he lived in that, that mid cabin, you know, the one that's kind of like a coffin in those boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're, they're great boats, but the, but everybody knows the mid cabin's not, not much anyway. Uh, so, so we, we did that for about a season and realized, okay, we really love this. Let's find something else. And from that, we moved into a 37 footer, the 37 footer we stayed with for three years. And that was when we discovered boating on the Long Island Sound and we got off the Hudson River and really got to see some some neat and, and different things. Well, I think, uh, you know, what what you mentioned, too, is uh, it and you hear it about pretty much everything in life. It, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And not yeah. only are you talking about all these journeys that you took, you know, to these different locations, but it's also your journey as a boater to kind of finding your way of what do you need in a boat? Uh, 
you know, we started out with this, we just wanted to get on the water. And then from mm -hmm. there you said, well, you know, we need maybe a cabin. We need some places to put more stuff. We need uh, maybe uh, a head. Um, so as people progress in the boating world, they always are, are on that journey of, you know, what else could, could make this better? Right. And, uh, and you're clearly, I think, uh, as you've progressed, uh, found all those things and you continue to this day. Yeah. And, and it's something that every boater talks about, you know, what are the compromises you're no longer yep. willing to make, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's canvas right. or not having a hard top or, you know, wh whatever the case may be. And, you know, there's, there's, there are many adages in boating, one of which is buy the biggest boat you can afford as your next boat. That's not necessarily true because you don't know right. necessarily nope. where your lifestyle is going to fit into it. Our boat after our 37 express cruiser was the Meridian 441, which we bought from Marine Max. And we loved that boat. It was exactly right for us uh, for the, I think that was four or five, at least four full seasons of ownership. And there she is down at Marco Island. Uh, I believe that was when we were, we, we took delivery in Sarasota. We left mm -hmm. her in Sarasota for that winter at Marina Jack. And then we did the trip I was working full time at the time, uh, both, both Tim and I were in, and uh, we were able to take off a spring break and do the trip to get her around to the East Coast through, through the Keys, as I mentioned earlier. And then we had a captain uh, run up to New York. But that boat, for, for, first of all, we couldn't believe we were able to be in a boat that size again. Uh, we love the technology that had Zeus pods, which I absolutely love yeah. having on that boat. It was a great way to graduate to that bigger size. Um, mm -hmm. we had excellent luck with our Zeus pods. Um, and it was a perfect coastal cruiser. It, it suited our needs at that time perfectly because we were basically weekend and vacation boaters. So on the weekend, we kept the boat out on the Long Island Sound. You know, we only had a couple of hours to get off to a destination to right. enjoy for the weekend. So it was good that it was a 26 knot boat and it would do 26 knots all day, which was great. If you had told me then or when we were out on our 210 sun deck that we would be thrilled to be 10 knot boaters i never would have believed but it's an entirely it you know being on a motor yacht um is an entirely different life lifestyle and mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's one of the reasons that one of our favorite toys is our 13 foot boston whaler that acts as our tender so uh, <laughs> that's, you know, that's a nice tender sort of to perfect have. Flight point. yeah yeah it, it's it's um you know the boat when we bought olo she came with a, a perfectly good center console 12 foot rib but with jasper we need more space and we like to mm -hmm. have friend, friends with us um there are some reasons why some people shy away from whalers and full fiberglass boats as they're tender for us it was a great balance especially because down in key west it is such a magical place to get in and get in the shallows and go to sandbars and right. and hang out and it's the perfect boat for that because it is it is a boat. It is it's not simply a tender, and uh, you know which for the most part are great as utility, but they're you're limited by the space. And so we have a 1983 classic Boston Whaler uh, with a modern 30 30 horsepower uh, Evan Reed E Tech on it that yeah. we we purchased through a friend of a friend and have uh, continued in its restoration and upgraded and it even has a 13 inch chart plotter which people think i'm crazy for having a big chart <laughs> big it's 13 inches but hey, what you said, what you what you have, yeah you know i figured you know one inch per foot there you go so yeah we <laughs> we love we love that thing we, we we've become a classic boston whaler there's a thing you know it's it's like uh jeep owners they flash their headlights at each other way yes and, uh, yep. there's a thing with whaler owners we're like uh-huh that's nice all right. well, the good thing yeah. is, even, you know, you get a, a, a vintage whaler, a brand new whaler. They're both classic. Like it's just a classic yeah. uh, brand, especially with those 13s. Uh, it's and it's in a, in a way, those are some of the best boats to start boating on themselves uh, as a young, you know, kid or something like that. Get mm -hmm. on a 13 whaler, and you'll get set up. The, the number of times that we've been hanging out on Olo and the whalers tied up behind us, and people walk by Olo and say, "Oh, that's a pretty boat," whatever. But they stop at the whaler. And they yep. stare at that whaler and more than, I don't know, at least a dozen times I've gotten into conversations with, you know, men and women who have said, that's the boat I started on when I was just a yep. kid. Uh. So um, I, I noticed uh, you graduated to a Flybridge 
what are the benefits to you of having a, a boat with a flybridge? Um, you know, you talked about being down in the BBIs. I mean, you know, one of the best things about being on a boat, I feel like, is a good view. And uh, yeah. tell us about your experiences owning something that actually has a flybridge. Yeah, well, for us, it, it was something we were sure we wanted next. A couple of things, and, and this is what brought us to the Meridian. Um, we really liked the idea that it had a hard top, and we liked the idea that it had a full polycarbonate enclosure for that flybridge with climate control. Because as much as I love the wind in my hair when I'm running the boat, when you're really becoming a destination boater and you're doing a lot of cruising and you're, you're out on the water for you know, two, three more hours, the wind blowing in your face, at least for some people, myself included, can get kind of fatiguing. So that was, was part of that design. And, and mm -hmm. what has happened with express cruisers largely since we got out of that style of boat is, of course, they have the full glass up front, which I think makes a huge difference. But yeah, the visibility was key for us. And uh, we have met a lot of older boaters in, in our years of boating at the level we've been boating who all say, yeah, get a, get a boat with stairs on it now, because you may not want that when right. you get to be our age. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things. But we'll, we'll never go back full time, I don't think, uh, at least for a long time, to a boat that doesn't have the ability to run from the flybridge. Now, having said that, with Olo being a, a motor yacht, there is a pilot house which mm -hmm. we always say one of the nice things about the design of Olo is the pilot house is situated not as an afterthought, but right. uh, as really an integral part of the design and the uh, sight lines are terrific. And we will run from the flybridge as often as the weather permits, but if it's not nice, there's no reason to. And there's nothing right. like running down in the, in the comfort with the heat on, or if it's exceptionally hot, we'll run downstairs with the air conditioning on, although if it's, you know, we're up, we're up top and then we'll have yeah. the wind blowing. And at 10 knots, by the way, the wind is not so, so, you know, vicious. Uh, <laughs> if, yeah. if it's not also blowing in addition to that. So we love running from the pilot house as much. I love having both. It will be important in whatever boat we get into when and if we graduate from Olo, uh, mm -hmm. that it is a true pilot house. Uh, and what we love about the design of Olo as well is it's not separated. We had long considered um, Hatteras was was long on our list, an older hat for a while, which a lot of people say this shares some of the, the, the DNA of that old Hargrave design. But the hat motor yacht that we really got our um, feet wet with larger motor yachts was a friend of ours has a 75 hat motor yacht, which that's the boat that said, oh, we can have a bigger boat. We can handle a bigger boat, just the two of us mm -hmm. with, with Jasper helping out when he can. Of course. But but that has a completely separate pilot house. And for the way we like to run and operate, we do like it being one big open space. And that way, if I'm up running the boat, we're on an offshore passage. Tim can be back at his desk or in the galley working on something or, or you know, just sitting on the, the couch with Jasper in the salon. But we're still all together. And typically, we're both up front keep, keeping watch. Um, so it obviously is all situationally dependent. Uh, but yeah, no, nothing. Go, going back to your point, Kelly, nothing beats, be, beats the uh, visibility of a flybridge. No, I absolutely not. Notice that whaler up there too. That's that's yeah. There she I is. Can, and and now you can kind of see. You're saying, okay, well, it's a tender. You know, it's uh, having the 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 transom of the boat. But really, this thing's got a perfect platform up there. Yeah. Uh, right for that whaler. Yeah. No, it it sets up well. The bridge deck and and a lot of motor yachts obviously have that uh, space on the aft section of the bridge deck for yeah. a tender. And, and one of the first things we did when we got Olo is we upgraded the Davit system and we put in a fully hydraulic, completely automated Davit to make it easier to get our, our then rib tender off the boat. Um, the thing, the difference between a rib obviously and something like the whaler is the whaler is unforgiving. If it bangs into a pole, that's fiberglass hitting you know, one of the stanchions on the boat, yep. it's not, yep. it's not one of these inflatable tubes. So we just, we figured out a system. Uh, we found a great product. We had, a, we had cradles for the um, old tender that were custom made for, for that. So we needed a solution for mounting this to the deck of the boat. And that was a whole process trying to figure that out. And I'm just mentioning this because it's a great resource for people. And we talk about things, when we find products we fall in love with, we're not taking money from people or anything. We just talk about it because we're paying right. for the knowledge that we've gained as voters. This is one of those products 
we we checked out having a set of custom davits made, a custom cradle made rather for um, for the whaler, and you could spend thousands of dollars doing that. Then we stumbled upon this product called VersaChalk, had long conversations with the owner of the company who came up with the design to fill a need that he also found w there was a void for, and we've absolutely loved it. We're in our second season with the VersaChalk product, and we yeah. have uh, we're so pleased that we did it and didn't have to get involved with you know reconstructing our deck and and having these yeah. custom you know it's nice to have everything customized. You have to everybody's got to have a limit as to where you're going yeah. to. Uh, allocate your funds. Yep. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, I know that you've also made some improvements to Olo. Uh, yep. On your website, you go into a couple of different refurbs or refits, uh, which is probably beneficial to uh, any other person looking to kind of do the same thing. Yeah, I would say anybody who is purchasing an older boat, um, really a boat that it, that's even you know eight, ten years old or older, we'll possibly be looking at many similar projects to what we've done. And part of the joy of boat ownership, of course, is the refit. I see, uh, Kelly, you're bringing up the electronics mm -hmm. refit. If you hold that shot for a second, that is the helm on Olo when we took possession of her. That chart plotter was state-of-the-art, best you could buy <laughs> in 2004. Yeah. Uh, that, that was not going to, to hold up for our needs. I'm, I'm a bit of a techie. I'm a little bit of a, a geek when it comes to electronics and I love marine electronics and, and I, I follow all of the guys who write about that stuff uh, all the time, Panbo included, Ben Ellison and, and, and other guys. Uh, so we got together with a company months before we closed. Our closing took a little longer because of some issue that we uncovered, but we connected with a local guy where the boat was months before we closed, uh, mm -hmm. Steve at uh, Custom Navigation in Westbrook and oh, okay. long conversations with him. And I said, Steve, the day we close, I want your guys on that boat doing this refit of the electronics. Yep. So let's figure it all out now. And we did, we, we went with a complete Garmin suite. Um, Steve even insisted that I hold off on spending money on certain things and waited until I used the boat for a while to see how we enjoyed them. So yeah, we run through all of that on the website uh, right there. As you see on the menu bar, there's a project section and we sort of dip through each of the various projects we've done uh, over time. Now, Kelly, I'm going to have to insist, if I may, since sure. you showed that you showed that picture of the old helm. Can we show? I, I think I, I sent you a shot of the the helm completely the new helm. Uh, hey, let's yeah. see here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try to find it here. He's got to work his his wizard like magic. All right, well, no, <laughs> that's good. You see it one more time. There you go. It's under it's under projects section. You said. Actually, okay. if you, can you go to the stills that I sent you? Can you get out of that page? And if let's you see here. Mark, it's one of the stills, um, that's just a nice shot right, of right. the. Oh, okay. From here. this mug mug account. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Bear with me. Bear, Work your magic, man. We're all techies <laughs> here. So, uh, we got, there here we go. Boom. There it all is. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bring that, bring that whole crew. Wow. Up. All right. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. Well, so yeah. that's, what's cool about these kind of things. I and mean, especially, uh, you know, refitting some of these boats is, uh, and, and just like a home, how you can completely make a smart home out of a home that was built in the 1800s if you really want to. I mean, some of these boats are, uh, you know, it, you put all this brand new technology in something that's, uh, you know, 10, 20 years, whatever, uh, old, and, and, and you can uh, make it brand new. And it's like a, a, a vintage look with all the high tech uh, gadgets and gizmos you could possibly want. Yeah, and and I will say, and you're looking at Olo's helm. Um, yeah. If you're a fellow, if you're a fellow helm geek, uh, it just it sets up really nicely. It's it's um, what you can't tell from the perspective of the picture. It doesn't obstruct your sight lines at all. The mm -hmm. fact that they were doing a pod style helm like that, then um, it really allowed us to get in there. We didn't even have to replace any you know major pieces of of the laminate. Uh, we just worked with what was there, and I'll just run through for the fellow electronic. If I was watching this, and I'm an electronics geek, I want to know what's happening. So yes, <laughs> we have the, yes, we have we have the Garmin suite. Um, I'll actually start from right to left. That's the original Icom 604 that came with the boat, and we were we were very happy with that radio. It has DSD in it. Thrilled with that. Just below that, to the right, is my stealth button. So the Garmin um, AIS doesn't have as a menu item a way for you to turn off your transmitter on your AIS. So I had them put that switch there 
Okay. And I can flick that on and then Olo goes silent. Or right next to that is a vintage 2004 uh, multiplexer for the cameras that are on board, the black and white cameras that we still have mm -hmm. yet to upgrade. We're, we're going to do network color cameras that'll go to the plotter. That's our yacht controller remote to the left of that. Then, of course, the two uh, Garmin multifunction displays. Um, we added digital radar. Uh, and that handset you see there is wired to our uh, ICOM, which is up at the helm on the bridge deck. Then we have the uh, multi data display to the left of that, showing we're in 11.8 feet. And just below that, another one of the major upgrades we did was to our stabilizer system, Westmar and um, the folks at Yacht Equipment and Parts down in Fort Lauderdale did a spectacular job of upgrading our fin size and giving us modern electronics that make our stabilizers work far better than they did uh, when we first bought Olo. So that was a, a big, big deal. Very cool. Wow. Yacht controller too. That's a, that's a pretty cool piece of tech that you got in there. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 an interesting uh, conversation piece when we're pulling into a dock. And, you know, <laughs> I bet they're they're well, they're fairly ubiquitous now. People are aware of them, but at the same time, every now and then we pull in a spot, and some guy will say, "Are you driving the boat from that?" <laughs> and and so um, it was one of the first pieces of gear we we put on the boat, and I can't say enough good things about it. There are a lot of old salts and 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 people who are afraid of the idea of wireless technology controlling your boat, and that is a perfectly understandable uh, reservation to have. But this is proven technology. We did a lot of research into the company. I mean, they're in, in, installed in close to 20,000 boats, and the redundancy and just the way it is set up um, gave us enough comfort that now I am happy to report in hundreds of dockings and undockings and uh, grabbing moorings and releasing moorings and anchoring and releasing our anchor. Uh, we haven't had one flaw, one uh, blip where it hasn't worked uh, as it was supposed to work. And, and to tell people quickly how we use it, whenever we're pulling into or away from the dock, I step away from the actual helm station right outside the pilot house door. So I'm never really more than three feet away from that helm control because out of an abundance of caution, I want to be you know, close to the actual wired in controls. Right. But this allow this allows me to stand at any place on the boat. Again, I'll I, I only need to stand right outside the pilot house door and I have a perfect vantage point to bring the box, uh, boat in or out of a dock. Um, we operate, it's usually just the two of us and Jasper doing uh, all the legwork unless we have friends or uh, our friend Captain Sean on board or any of other other captain friends traveling with us. Um, and so Tim is on the back. We wear ear tech wireless do Flex head, headset, so he keeps an eye on things at the stern. And I have to tell you, it is. It may not be for everybody, but for us, it was uh, money extraordinarily well spent. I, I always say it is not a gadget, it is not a toy. It's mm -hmm. uh, just an incredible tool to have uh, at your disposal. And I mentioned that 75-foot motor yacht that we sort of cut our teeth on big boating with uh, our friends, and he has a yacht controller system. And it was through our experience over the course of bringing his boat with him up and down the coast a few times, learning that system, knowing that it was something we wanted, particularly given the shorthanded nature of how we typically uh, run our boat. Now, and your YouTube channel actually has a couple of pictures of you pulling into various marinas where you can see right. uh, both Tim, Jasper, and yourself all at the bow of the boat. And you're like, who's, who's running the boat right now? And <laughs> yeah. you, it looks like you're up there. You've got your headset on playing a little video game, but you're yeah. down the boat. It's, it's excellent technology. It really is excellent technology, and, and, and one of the, the really cool ways to use it is dropping anchor or at a mooring field. How many times do you see you know, people, whether they're wearing hand, hand, headsets or just doing hand signals to whoever's yeah. back at the helm trying to get it? Well, I can stand right at the bow pulpit, and at that point, no, still, in two and a half seconds, I can be back at the, the main helm station, right. but I can stand right at the bow pulpit with whoever's handling the ground tackle, you know, making the adjustments, using the, the gears and the thrusters to, to get us uh, where we need to be. Yeah, it's it's an incredible piece of technology, um, and I would do it again in, in a heartbeat. Uh, and here you go. Probably will probably will never own a boat uh, with that. Okay, where are we arriving at? Oh, Legacy Harbor. Yeah, this was yeah. Um, just this past year uh, after we came down the ICW, we crossed Lake Okeechobee, and I wanted to show people uh, just this little demonstration video of how to get in there. Mm -hmm. We typically have our GoPro camera running when we're pulling into a marina, so I, I always wish for a lot of marinas that are unfamiliar that I could 
see it. You know, you can look at satellite images, you can look at slip maps, but to actually see the width of the fairways, which is always deceptive on a on a uh, slip map, to actually be able to see. And there's Captain Sean, who is with us. Yep. We've just come out of Lake Okeechobee. In fact, I believe the previous night was spent at Roland Mark Marina's. Ah, oh, all right. Martin Marina on the lake, yep. We missed Cowboy Karaoke Night. But yeah, Looks if like we get up to the dock here. was perfect. So by now, I'm standing next to the pilot house on the yacht controller. And just when we're getting a little closer, I come a little further up. Fortunately, Sean is there to hand off the lines, but I can just as easily hand off the lines. It's that simple. That is cool. So, so wow. not only did people get to see how you pull into Legacy Harbor in Fort Myers, but now you saw me <laughs> operating the, the yacht controller. That's awesome. Well, well, shout out to the guys uh, at Yacht Controller because I know that they go on a lot of boats. Uh, we, we had a cool uh, interactive uh, demonstration aboard a galleon when we were down there in Key West. It keeps coming up. But uh, and to see that stuff in action, it's it's pretty cool. And just where will technology be in 10 years, 20 years down the road? There you go. Yeah. And, 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 you know, some people, as I said, some people are resistant to it. And, and that's fine. There are a lot of people who say, well, if my boat does and have cables, you know, moving the gear around, mm-hmm. then it's it's not for me. And and I and I have, I have nothing but respect for that. And I've tried to understand all the different systems as well as possible. Our boat happens to have digital throttle and shift. Uh, it was already built into the boat. Um, do problems exist with those sometimes? Sure. Do problems exist with you know cables and hydraulics? They're boats. We we all yeah, know the reality right. of that. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, you, you sort of strike the balance that works for you. I'll, I'll never be preachy about it, but I, I think having the facts and understanding is important. And the one thing I'll always say at, at, about the yacht controller, people will say, oh, you could stand on the dock and, you know, run your boat from the dock. And we don't have to have a discussion about the foolishness <laughs> of running your boat from a dock. I, I will say, if you have just tied up, once our engines are, are off, I'll often get out on the dock and I, I, I wear the yacht controller remote on a lanyard around my neck. You know, we will, I'll walk up and I can bump over the thruster while I'm standing at that cleat and tie off, mm. tie off that bow um, without having to run back up or keep somebody on board to, to nudge the boat over with the thruster. So when you're in a bigger boat, um, you know, in our case, a 60 footer, it does make short work of, of a lot of things. Yeah. Right. So you've mentioned a lot of things that if I were a new boater and I was just thinking about, you know, where I wanted to start, you've mentioned a lot of things that, you know, would give me something to think about. Right. Do you have any other advice as somebody who's just starting out and they're just doing their research? What are some things they should think about when, you know, starting off into the boating industry? Well, I think um, I can't emphasize education enough, uh, you know, and, and in terms of, of safety and gaining knowledge and never being, never being the person who feels like you have to act like I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I remember uh, being yelled at by our dock master in, in New York because I got back to the marina, we tied the boat, we went to see everybody. And she said, you know, you blew by that marina out on the river full bore. And I said, what are you talking about? And, and she explained to me, Something and and I, it's ridiculous that I even have this conversation now, but I, I'm not ashamed to admit I didn't know that you have to slow down when you go past the marina. I mean that it's it's so fundamental as a boater, and I'm crazy about people who don't mind their wake, and we are uh, diligent, uh, uh, and we are we are the people who make some very slow passing arrangements, and and um, you know that that's a big big deal. Uh, but but don't be the person who's afraid to to want to learn and understand. Boating courses are incredible. There's probably no better education than spending a few days on your new boat uh, with mm-hmm. a captain or chartering a boat with a captain. You know, if you have the opportunity, if you think, well, the cruising lifestyle is more appealing to me than just having a day boat that I, I want to run around on, well, then go do a, a, a charter uh, with Marine Max charters, for instance, where you can uh, engage a captain who can come along and not only be the person who can you know, handle things so you can maybe have a cocktail because never, ever, ever, ever have a cocktail until that boat is securely tied, mm-hmm. but uh, they can also teach you more. Uh, and, and that's one of the things going back to what I, I love about boating in general is it, it has always made me jump beyond myself. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't think of it that way. It was always just, Oh, let's go out and have some fun. 
but it is a challenge. You, you learn things. I, I have a mechanical ability to an extent that I never mm-hmm. engaged in other parts of my life. Uh, navigation, I love it. Uh, all the electronics just feeds into that geekdom of my techie <laughs> side. So, uh, you know, there, there's just the endless things to learn. And, and if there's a boater uh, who tells you they don't learn something new uh, on the water every time they're out, they're probably not being truthful. And you will meet a, a guy who's been a captain for 30 years and they will tell you the same way. Um, so, yep. you know, having having a respect for the fact that, you know, you are still moving around a large piece of equipment that mm-hmm. does not have brakes. Uh, trying to really understand every aspect of it and not be shy about asking questions and getting training, I, I think would be first and foremost of what I'd recommend to people. Education, right. education, education. That's right. <laughs> and, 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 also, and also know that if you think, you know, you're going to stop at a, a 13 footer, uh, one day you two may wind up with a 60 footer. I mean, it's the last, I never, never could have imagined. Oh, or just have both, like like and, you. Well, <laughs> there's that, but but nice. but but in all seriousness, it, it is you know the the type of boating we do now is mm-hmm. completely different from the boating we started out doing. You know, we love the journey, we love the destination too. That is a huge mm-hmm. part of it. You know, uh, and and being able to have essentially your home and the comforts of home at that destination, and whether that's on a 26 foot Sundancer or you know an 80 foot motor yacht. Um, you know, we all find our, our, our own comfort zone. And, uh, and the idea, again, for, for me personally, of um, a boat the size that we're in right now uh, was unfathomable, uh, not all that long ago. So what's the future? What, what, what's the future of, of you? Of, <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 are, are you boating? Oh, where, oh, where not, are you not just the future in general, because I have no idea what's going on <laughs> in general. Um, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so what, what is the future? Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, when we get back on, on Olo, um, you know, trying some, some new things, getting to some new destinations. Uh, we would love to get back to the Bahamas. We've only made it there once. We thought about going this past year, and thankfully, uh, given everything that happened, we, we are happy with the fact that we made the decision not to do that. But we really want to get back there. We have some more projects we want to do. Um, the boat does not have a water maker. We really want a water maker. We want to. Ah. We, we want to so we can be more, you know, self-sufficient. Uh, and and we would love a good inverter system. That's another uh, big project that's been on our list since we uh, bought the boat. Um, topping off many of the. I mean, we we have a long list. If people go to the website, they'll see the long list of projects we've done, as well as the places that we've been. Um, but over the course of the next few months, we're going to be uh, just writing a lot about different aspects of our uh, boating life and, and things we've been doing. Um, some people know Captain Sandy from Below Deck Med, mm-hmm. and uh, Captain Sandy is a friend who we've been toying with an idea for a project that, you know, given everything now, we're not sure when uh, or if that's going to happen, but it's kind of a neat idea that uh, you'll have to stay tuned and see if it happens. And uh, and really just enjoying life and, 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 you know, at the same time, not taking for granted for, for a second that, that we get to do all this. I mean, that, that's the most important right. thing I can, yep. I can also say is, uh, boy, I, I can't believe it. And, and we're so grateful and, and thankful. We worked, we worked hard to get here, but still um, we get it. And, you know, that's, that's really, again, uh, what we're drawn to in, in the boating community. One, one of the things we were talking before about what, what drew me to it. Um, one of the neat things in all the years that I was on television and, and doing my show, and it, w- it would not be uncommon to show up somewhere, um, party a dinner or whatever. And, and people love hearing about celebrities, you know, oh, what's George Clooney really like or that. that. And that, that, that's fine. It's, it was part of my work. But boating was the great escape. And when you would meet other boaters on the dock, what, what do you do for a living? if you ever got around for that question was 10th or 12th on the list right. three days after you've met them, you're talking about your boats, where you've been, uh, what was your arrival cocktail? Uh, <laughs> you know, where do you, where do you hope to go getting in the engine room, showing off your electronics or whatever it is, the modifications you've made. And, and that was this sort of uh, collateral piece of it that I didn't anticipate. That was, was a really nice part of the experience. And, uh, and, that kept me at it for such a long time. Yep. Well, 
I had to show the picture because you mentioned it too. So oh. uh, <laughs> there you go. yeah, That's there's me cool. working. So yeah, this is how you will see me if you meet me out on the water, and that is how you will see me on a red carpet. Uh, yeah, very and, cool. Uh, Kelly, and I, I know, and I know you want to say, so what's George Clooney really like? <laughs> I was gonna, say, I was gonna ask if he was a boater. Actually, I was gonna be like, is he? So does he? Do you know anything about his boating experiences? But, uh, <laughs> but that's that's a really cool experience. Well, yeah, no, he he, he has a home on Lake Como, but but I can I can actually tell you, um, I've I've had uh, so, some some people of note in in our orbit who I know to be boaters, and I can mention one in particular because because she is. Um, a Marine Max customer, uh, okay. and and um, probably I, I'm trying to think if she's been uh, featured in, in the magazine, but um, she will she be. Is, if she has it. Well, she, <laughs> well, you're gonna know. Well, I'll give you this clue. She's the first person who would tell you, "Don't buy a boat. Don't spend your money on a boat." And hmm. she bought a boat. In fact, she bought a boat be, on, on our recommendation. We kind of talked her into her first uh, boat was, I believe, it was a '53 Azimut. And oh my gosh! Cool. Because tiptoe in, the, just tiptoe because, in. Because of the fifty-three Azimut, she fell in love with going to the Bahamas, and because she okay. fell in love with boating in the Bahamas, she fell in love with fishing. She is now one of the best, um, most prize-winning uh, game fish people over in the Bahamas. Mm. Wow! Who am I talking about? I. Maybe we Remember should leave it for like uh, the viewers. I, I almost I, feel like that'd be a cool question okay. for like all the viewers all right. out there. Like, who do you I, guys I, think I, that that would be? The key clue is the financial aspect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Okay. All right. We'll We're gonna it, have to we'll give do it ten seconds, about. or we could just give I, it ten seconds here. Who do you guys <laughs> think? And then we'll just if she if, she, if she's <laughs> watching, she she knows. I I feel fully, uh, and, and Tim as well. We feel fully responsible for the fact. Um, that actually we feel, feel completely responsible for the fact that she ended up building a home over in the Bahamas. <laughs> I know that, that that might be a that might be a bit of a leap, but we really we got her we showed her pictures of our boating life and got her very excited about mm -hmm. the cruising life. This is when we had our Meridian and she kind of fell in love with the Meridian style and then she fell in love with the Azmit, which she got from Marie Max and, and the boat that they currently have which she fishes off of. So are we gonna are we gonna give it up? Are, do you guys I, really I, not know? We have to. I, I can't. I can't think of it. Lisa, who who do you? Think? I got nothing. <laughs> wow. All right. What's what's the reveal? She she is the financial guru, um, who uh, will will tell you what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. She's very matter of fact. I want to see She's Judge Midwestern. Judy. Well, she, <laughs> no, no. But won't no. Judge Judy tell you what you're doing wrong? <laughs> she will, but not financially necessarily. I, I don't think. I'm talking about Susie Orman. Ah, oh. of course, yeah. Abby's uh, just like, of course, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that is awesome. Well, maybe we can uh, discuss with her one day about her her boating experiences on from the helm boating broadcast, Lisa. Well, and, she's uh, got a lot to say, that Susie Orman. I tell you what, that's true. And I love her, and and I and I love, and I I do feel even if it's a small piece. Uh, our influence was a small piece of her uh, getting into boating the way she did and it leading to these other things. We we're very happy about that. She's, she's an amazing person. Um, her wife, KT mm -hmm. is also her manager is this in, incredible uh, person as well. And so, uh, and yeah, yeah. Funny, yeah. funny little have, things and the people yeah. you meet and, and we met because of the work that I did. That's great. And it's funny how that boating gene will come out and it's, it's different at every age. I, yeah. I, I inherited it from my father. We, I grew up on a lake. I grew up, you know, pontoon boating and that little inland lake in Michigan. I know Kelly grew up fishing and in, in, the mid, in the Midwest. So everybody <laughs> kind of does it a little bit differently. Uh, there's one more photo that I'd love for you to pull up, Kelly. It is, um, it is the um, the tender, the classic 13 foot whaler. It is uh, on their website that you have oh. a, a project. I think it's under the projects tab um, that talks all about what you've done to the classic 13 and just to make it fit your lifestyle and fit what you guys are doing. And yeah. I thought it was just so cool how you took this classic, you know, basically it was just, it's a shell of a boat. It's a classic whaler. Mm -hmm. It's unsinkable. It's, it's, you know, a right. vessel. and just like you said, you put a 13 inch, you know, chart plotter in it and, and made, right. it, made it work. And I yeah. thought it was so cool. This so there's the old one. And okay, then you named so it One Love. 
which I love. Right, we, named it one love we named it One Love, which would give you a little hint as to uh, the name of, of what Olo is. But so this first picture you're looking at right there, um, that was when we had just received it. Now the, uh, the folks we bought it from had done a restoration on it uh, to an extent and, and, you know, did the woodwork, put the seats in and a few other things, put that uh, terrific Evan Rude E-Tech on there. We, since this picture was taken, have taken a step further. We, we did the bottom paint because it was staying in the water. Mm -hmm. in that classic Boston Whaler blue. Uh, we have since, well, you can see the chart plotter on there. We've since uh, added to the seats. We've refinished all the wood. We put a bimini top on the thing. There's Happy Tim driving the whaler. Yeah, that is cool. And, Look at that. and the story boy. there was his, his first boat was a Boston whaler. Uh, Montauk Aww. 15. And so this was when we were looking for what to get. Uh, and this came sort of fell into our laps. It was sort of a no brainer, but we, yep. we just love it. Um, yeah, we've done a few other things, put a bigger fuel tank in it. Um, the It's funny that, that, that that's one of the seats. That's uh, my uh, brother-in-law, Smitty, working on one of the that's seats cool. for me. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. and they're, la they're labors of love. We've since redone the cushions. Unfortunately, we don't have pictures of that yet. We we had installed them just before our quick exodus from uh, from Key West after the coronavirus broke out, and we had to bolt on out of there. But they're neat boats. Yeah. There's the there's the bimini on it, and uh, and it really is a good complement for the kind of boating that we do. Uh, nothing more fun, and it is Jasper's absolute favorite thing. You will see half the pictures of Jasper or him on the front of that whaler. You know, why they're just that's floating great. you're looking for dolphins. Isn't that great? It looks like, and that's in Stock Island Marina Village. Yep. <laughs> that's the the unsinkable there. legend. Unsinkable. Yeah, right there. That looks, to me, that looks like a Photoshop picture as if it's just put to look like it's floating on the water. But that is that is a genuine, <laughs> genuine shot. Uh, and, and to be clear, we had life jackets for everybody. We were three <laughs> feet up, away dark. from the dock. Yep. We yeah. just did that in a still base. And I just want to make sure. Yep. You know, that we, we may have had, you know, it a little overloaded there. I wish you hadn't shown that, Kelly, but okay. <laughs> hey, I'm scrolling. That, yeah, is, that, is, that is Jasper want to go for a whaler ride. He will run off our boat and hop right on the whale. Yeah, oh, he's, got his, uh, yeah. he's got his life jacket on. He's ready for a day on the water, too. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, ooh, and he's got the rough wear, too. That's, that's, uh, that yeah. is a quality uh, life vest right there. That's Good great. piece of gear. So you, you were just ne uh, mentioning uh, the name of the boat, Olo. I, I yeah. figured right when you said that, and now I know what the name of the boat is, but can anybody else? Uh, yeah, do Lisa? you have any other guesses? Do you know right, what it well, is? My, my guess is... Well, hold one, on. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, this is another That's opportunity true. for people who are watching. Trivia. That's yep. true. That's true. Well, usually our um, our clue that we give to people is let's get together and feel all right, which yep. probably just confirmed to you, Lisa, that you got the answer right. Yeah. I, yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're well, going. And you, and you go back, you go back to the name. What's the name of the uh, the tender here? One right. love, right? Right. And then OL. Oh, it, it doesn't say that picture. It doesn't you say have right there. It, yeah, it doesn't say it on there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've so got. I think O L O H. Got yeah. one love. One love. Matt one from heart. Cincinnati just got it right. Yeah, look what he wrote there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt from Cincinnati's got it. You nailed it, Matt. Yeah. We're gonna send you one of those uh, those Galleon Yeti mugs. Uh, hey, for, listen, for you're, he's gonna hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, it's been a blast. I have to yeah, say. Yeah, it's been uh, fun. Yeah, and uh, we'd love to have you on some other time and, and talk more boating tales because, uh, of course, you know, just being out on the water, there's the amount of stories that you can probably just think of off the top of your head is uh, you're just overflowing. Yeah, so, and, uh, and, think, and quite frankly, I think, you know, having come up and learning from uh, the boaters that I interacted with, whether it was at the marina or through some online forum, um, I've, I've always said, you know, boating is one of these great, aspirational lifestyles. Um, mm -hmm. Not in terms of, oh my God, I have to have the, oh, there's Jasper here. Uh, the, yep. uh, the, uh, not in terms of, oh, I aspire to have the biggest boat or the greatest boat. But when I started really reading about how people went boating, uh, when we owned our Sea Ray, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. I uh, would see that people would go on these 
you know, week long trips to multiple destinations. And then I learned about traveling on the ICW. And then I learned about the great loop and, and it just, it, it opened up a whole world that I didn't even know existed. And so for anybody who may just be sort of toying with the idea of going out just to run around and drop anchor and have a swim and, and, and a sandwich, you know, it, the sky is really the limit and there are aspects to it that I probably don't even fully grasp or understand yet. And so one of the, the real purposes real quick about Adventures of Olo on our website, it's a passion project for it, for us. We, we write about the things we learn about. We write about the things that we do, the places that we go to, because we do believe there will be a benefit to somebody. So we're just kind of paying for the knowledge that we've learned over, over the years. And it's been fascinating since we've been keeping the website going. We get letters from people around the world who mm-hmm. share their experiences and people who are planning their first ICW trip who want to know about our experience and, mm-hmm. and things of that nature. So we're, we're really just thrilled to be a part of, of the conversation and a part of this community, which is an incredible, very diverse community uh, of all uh, walks of life, people from all, from all aspects of life, um, you know, all socioeconomic backgrounds. Mm-hmm. There, there, are, there are no barriers. And yeah. if it's something that, you know, I would say this to anybody watching who's just sort of toying with the idea, there are plenty of boating forums and, and YouTube has no shortage of, of videos of people living that life that maybe you've thought about. So just seek it out and, uh, and join the fun. That's great, because usually we ask people, you know, what, what's your last thing to say uh, to all the boaters out there? But I think you kind of nailed it with that. Statement. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, That's awesome. if, if people are interested in more, your website is full of information yep. and stories. The the blog is is really actually very fun to read. Like you said, it's a passion project. So it's little tidbits and it's, it's especially the stuff going through um this pandemic and things being shut down and how to deal from the boaters perspective you know some things you wouldn't even think that you had to deal with just yeah. like where where that where do we go where do we get our stuff yeah and and you know it's it's interesting you say that we wrote a very long series about uh our decision making process as the pandemic mm-hmm. was unfolding and then our ultimate departure from Key West which was what we decided was best for us um you know we 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 went through all of that keenly keeping in mind, you know, again, uh, may this be the worst of our problems. I mean, we, we, mm-hmm. we had to make what were tough decisions in the perspective of what we were going through, but it was never lost on us that, boy, do we have it easy. And, and, and I'm, I'm just saying that because I, I, every day still, uh, you know, uh, we think about our, our frontline workers and the people who are out there and the people um, who are essential key people who have had mm-hmm. to endure things that we can't even imagine. So I, I, I mentioned that. I will mention though, if you're in quarantine again and, and you're really, you're, you've run out of things to read and, and things, to, oh, here it is, conveniently <laughs> behind me. You pick up your copy of uh, Chapman's. This is the Boating Bible still to this day. Nice. Uh, you know, I, I realize everything is online now, but this, this, this baby will tell you everything you've ever, ever, uh, wanted to know and and this is actually this i i we keep this in our library because it happens to belong to uh what belonged to our our late uncle bob uh who was a tremendous uh tremendous sailor and and lover of the water and uh um somebody who we take with us on every journey that we're on but uh so his, his very good condition copy of Chapman's, but it's funny, you know, I remember when I was a kid, my dad <laughs> said, well, I'm going to get you this book. And it was, it was like the Encyclopedia Britannica, but it's, it's cool to flip through and, and sort of, uh, you know, learn yeah. what you can and take from it what you can. Mm-hmm. Well, you've heard it here. I'm sure you can find it on uh, Amazon or eBay, uh, anywhere uh, online. I'm sure there's a lot of places to find Chapman's. So that's All awesome. Right. All right. Any any other final thoughts from Captain AJ? Uh, no, I, I I have to say, uh, you know, the one thing that I always took from my parents in in life, which sort of helped me forge a career and and just do something that I I loved, um, which I've I've taken to my boating life and just my general approach to life is to the extent you can follow your bliss. Uh, it, it's not always easy and it, and it may sound like cliche advice, but the truth is, uh, as far as I know, you know, Kelly asked me to predict the future before. <laughs> as, as far as I know, we only get to do this once. So 
uh, have a good time along the way, do some good for others, um, and, and, and enjoy, you know, time experiencing new things with, with the people you love. And that, that's what we do on Olo. And, and, and hopefully we get to share a little of that love, uh, with the people we meet and, and just with the people who follow us vicariously or through our website or, or however. So, uh, but it's, it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you guys. Marine Max. Yeah, thank you. A big part of, uh, our boating life and, and, what certainly brought us through different phases of our, our boating life. And uh, we were always really well taken care of. Um, and and that, that's a nice, nice aspect of this business. You know, nobody yeah. forces you to go boating. Everybody should enjoy the process, not just, mm -hmm. you know, it's not always easy, but, but, uh, yeah. but people should enjoy the process along the way. And when the people who are helping to enable that life, the people who you're buying boats from or getting your service from uh, mm -hmm. understand that, that is, critical and, and and that's what we we st we strive to do business with and seek out people who are like-minded in that way well, well very well said <laughs> if you had a mic mic drop that because that was that was fantastic well, if anybody out there watching is interested in more information we've mentioned it several times we brought it up we showed some examples mm -hmm. uh my it looks like my olo but it stands for model yacht or motor yacht olo um, the website is fantastic. The Facebook page is great. I think the Instagram uh, channel is my favorite. Obviously, boating produces so many beautiful views, and it's so much fun that you share it. all the information, everything that you've gone through, you know, all the different types of boats you've owned, all the refit projects that you've been working on, everything that you've learned, you're putting it out there for somebody else to hopefully glean that information to help their boating experience and their boating lifestyle, you know, take whatever turn it may be. So give them a follow, follow their journeys. And AJ, thank you so much for having, for joining us. I'm getting yep. flustered. I, I told you, like, I'm going to well, have to well, see Because I'm the host, right? Yeah. Thank you. For, thank you for having us. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. It's, I'm glad that Marine Max is doing this. And, and uh, if it gets more people interested in boating or, or brings them back to boating, which, which happens a lot, mm -hmm. people take a pause for a moment. There's never been a better time than, than right now. Uh, under the right circumstances. So, so thank you guys, and uh, for all your your uh, your folks at Marine Max, and uh, hi to Brett. How are you, Brett? <laughs> nice to see you. He's virtually waving back right now. You think so. you think we kept him through the whole episode? Absolutely. Yeah, from start yeah. to finish. Okay. <laughs> well, thank well, you very much, AJ. We and, and really I said, it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must also just say a couple of other good friends of ours at Marine Max. Your 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 coworkers, uh, Abby and Colin. Hi, hi guys. Nice to see you. <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the Hymansons. Uh, we gotta raise a glass, raise a glass to them. They are two of the important wheels that keep uh, keep that whole operation on the tracks. And don't you forget it, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so are these two right here. Yeah. Well, thank you. Greatly <laughs> appreciate right, it. Guys. It was yes. it was great to have you on. Thanks. And, uh, we'll, we'll do it again. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully again. next time you're in Florida, we can do this in person. That, that would, would be, be a lot cool. of fun. I I have one more Marine Max Yeti. I'll be able to break out for that occasion. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you much for joining us on this boating broadcast. We hope you stay healthy and boat happy. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.